There we go. Alright, let's settle all this up real quick. Go ahead and close this out. Refresh. Got some people watching. I'm here. I'm here. I, just give me a second. I got to pull it up over here. Give all right. All right. All right. Okay. What's up? How are we doing tonight? We doing good? All right, I'm going to let a few people come in and hang out. I'm going to do a cool little mushroom thing. Go ahead and... Uh, set this out. We're going to do this tonight. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I'm going to do this. All right. I'm going to try to get this camera centered up. Now, first things first, I'm going to show you guys something really freaking cool. I'm going to turn this around. All right. We're going to look at that. That's a case. That's a case of glass right there. And in this, I have got my NFT crypto bomb that uh, my really good friend Pogo and Pedro Grime made, and I want to show you guys this up real close. Let's see here. Let me get all this light up in here. Look at this thing. This thing is a piece of beauty and a piece of history. Right here, like right there, you could actually probably read that QR code if you wanted to snap a pic, but you can get it off my case. Grime made the amazing little poison skull on there and if you look even closer to it you're probably not going to see it in this light but it's got this uh fumed and laser engraved meme on there which is the nft and the nft you can find just by you could screenshot this and qr code and go look at what i own online and it's on the blockchain i bought it for one ethereum it was really cool That, that's just part of my travels and what I was doing the last few weeks is I wasn't really going live. I'm gonna hang that up over here. All right. All right, Ryan, you saw that. I showed you my little crypto bong. That's a really cool little piece of thing. Pull this guy right here. I'm gonna show you something else I got in Vegas since we're here. Yeah. We're all friends. And uh, this is a piece of glass that uh, I was blessed with. Save a story for it. But this thing's amazing. I had never heard of Soulfire Glass. And I feel like a freaking idiot because I didn't. But uh, she's an amazing glass artist. And uh, she gave me this little cool little piece. You know, look at that. Nice little Klein Recycler with the rainbow opal on there. I'm going to go ahead and fire up the dab. And I'm going to do it to it. We're going to do a mushroom this evening. Uh, I'm going to show you guys the cross tie and uh, how I accomplished the little gills, I guess. The gills kind of happen. clean this bad boy out real quick uh, you got to keep a banger clean or else you get nasty taste and you don't want nasty taste gotta take care of your bangers on your glass always take care of your bangers okay wait a second <coughs> it looks like I've stalled out over here uh, everybody got good live we're good? Alright. <coughs> Idiot, because I didn't. 
All right, here we go. All right, so <coughs> this evening I am working with uh, Custom Colors Blank. It's a size medium. <clears throat> and it was gifted to me by my friends over at shirtspace.com and if you check out shirtspace.com they've got uh, free shipping after $59 which is a great deal if you're ordering a bunch of shirts <coughs> I order a bunch of shirts when I order them so I'm gonna go ahead turn this bad boy inside out so that I can draw on it <coughs> with a marker I'm gonna go ahead <coughs> what up what up thanks everybody for joining me I appreciate it. it's good to see some familiar faces some of y'all I met just recently and I'm stoked to see you guys out here checking me out and be like yo what's this guy doing oh this guy's at home drinking most of the time just chilling <coughs> but I'll try and turn out work Those of you guys that I met in Las Vegas, I hope I see you at Champs. Because I am coming to Champs with a duffel bag again. I already got the green light. <coughs> so, if you guys are going to be out there, I'm going to be out there again. Initial Vegas house done. I really love the vibe out there for that. That, those glass shows are just amazing and it's been so long since anybody's seen anybody it was so good to get out into the public <coughs> and see everybody all right cool so we got this thing inside out now I'm gonna take it I'm gonna fold it and I'm gonna find a midpoint because I want to do this thing straight up and down on the front I'm just gonna do it on the front <coughs> now I can play with it a little bit. Here we go. Get that nice and front. I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna stuff my sleeve inside of this other sleeve while I'll pull it through. It's easier probably to pull it through. Get in there, get all intimate with it. There we go. Pull it through the other side. Match these seams on the inside of the sleeve because that is. Uh, for some reason, really, really important with symmetry. Kind of amazing what science makes you do. I'm holding the top point and the bottom point, so I keep these safe while I'm getting inside my seams and getting my sleeves all matched up. So now that the sleeves are matched up, take it off, and we've got a good start position. For a mushroom. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It's so nice. So nice and crisp and symmetrical. All right. So I have been using a yellow marker because I'm lazy and I don't, <coughs> I don't always turn the shirt inside out and I caught lines the other day and I was like, not nah, cool. So I have to make a mental effort to turn the shirt inside out. It's so very important okay now before I get drawing this uh, I am gonna upload this to YouTube and if you do find value in this and you'd like to contribute to uh, helping us out here at Kai Dives uh, go ahead and shoot a little tip over to my PayPal and do a little digital tip it's uh, Kai Dives at gmail.com pretty easy now all that's out of the way let's go ahead and do this don't forget to like and subscribe now I like the almond brothers and they got this really cool mushroom where if you kind of like start it off right here get a nice cool little cappy and you go down shit okay we're gonna do this a little better Boop. and it just kind of goes down and out Gives it a cool little cap with a high note on there. We're going to go ahead and find this cool little line. We're going to try to go like that. Boop. Like that. Just draw that guy out and we're going to come back to it. And we're going to draw the little gills right there. That's kind of how much we want to show. And we're going to draw the inside line. And just do that. 
There we go. Cool little bell bottom. Make sure that it's nice and square so you don't got a weird like point to your mushroom. I don't know. Mushrooms don't always have points to it, but you know, neither does tie dye. So I guess do whatever you want, honestly. Just make this shit cool. So we got this. Now <coughs> I'm gonna pull out my little piece of glass that I got in Colorado Springs. It was gifted to me from another friend. I have been so blessed with glass this week. <laughs> but what I was really reaching for was my tweezers. Tweezers are like my second hand. I use these every chance that I get. I'm going to really just do the outside line with the tweezers and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do what I call a cross tie to get these inside lines without hemostats. Um, I'm not able to see what's up on the comments so I'm just going to keep going. If, sorry if I don't talk enough to you but I do want to. I want to talk about this awesome experience that I had in Vegas. I had never been there before and I step off the plane into this magical gambling environment and I was just like, whoa, gotta stay away from the gambling. Okay, so as I start off, what I'm going to do is, uh, I call it like a half fold whenever I start off because whenever you get your line and you scrunch it down, a lot of times it's easier to have like a half fold and kind of like increase to it as it scrunches in because you're really trying to take all of your line and press it all the way down and all the way in at the same time. So it kind of helps with the pressure and keeps it from flipping up all crazy if you do a half fold at the beginning. So what I'm going to do, and the half fold kind of helps me determine the pace that I'm going to go at and the size that I'm going to go at. So I'm going to get that nice little halfway point right here. Let me see here. I got a... <laughs> My laptop stinks. There we go. Oh, there we go. I got a little more comments there. All right, cool. So we got that half there and we're going to come up and I'm just going to pinch up now. It just goes halfway, and I've got just a little bit of leeway, and whenever the pressure comes around this all the way across, it's going to alleviate a little bit of the, the, the pressure that it takes to fold and flip up. Notice that that helps me just a little bit. It's, it's just a very small detail, but every little detail helps. Now, as you guys have seen me, <clears throat> some of you guys know that I blow glass. Now, with a glass blowing torch, there's always a flame in front of you. There's a constant line that creates this y-axis, if you will, where everything that you add into it is your x-axis, so you're really fighting perpendicular a lot while spinning at the same time. So, the way that I look at tie-dye is the same as I would look at the torch. So following the line is really just kind of staying on track with the torch flame. So if I simplify it that much and I'm able to just look at it as I just have to keep this straight line, I get an opportunity to create this box because all of these will line up as long as I keep them nice and straight and without any deviations in the fold. And as long as they're all the about the same height it's going to squash together into this let's see it's going to squash together into this square now if I'm going to, I'm going to pull out this ruler real quick a little broken ruler because I, I can't have nice things because my kids they break everything so I, I'm folding the first the first time I'm going to try it at 1 16th of an inch one eighth to one sixteenth of an inch. Uh, it may be a little bit bigger, but that's about what we're going for. The more little pleats, the more definition you're going to have in your lines and the curve and the definition of your piece. And that's what we're going for. If you guys know me, you know that I go for detail and I'm kind of weird about it. But here we go. 
Now, we're getting to the first line right here. A lot of times I'm gonna to like to pull this one up so that I can have this on top. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn this, keeping all this together. I'm gonna to keep this on top and I'm just gonna move into my next line. Right, because I'm going to come back to that later on. I'm saving that for my cross tie. I'm planning ahead. I know that I've got to fold that in to the inside of this mushroom. Here very shortly. All right. Hey, hey, thank you everyone for joining me and listening to my ramblings as I tie dye some stuff. Now, my buddy Nathaniel was asking about those gills earlier. And the gills of the mushroom, <clears throat> it's really just a trick. <clears throat> I'm keeping a, a, a small pleat going, so it's going to mimic it whenever I apply two different colors of dye. And it creates kind of a... It, it'll, it'll create where it kind of pops out a little bit, like it almost jumps out. Go ahead and get to the edge over here. Now, as I approach this line, I want to be mindful of the pleat height so that I can try to make sure that this guy stays up here on top so that when it's time to come at it with the cross tie, we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and pleat that. It looks like I've got just the right amount of pleat height to get in there. Freaking awesome. That does not always work out like that. Sometimes I have to come back and tie it again. But to get both of those on the top pleat is great. Now, <clears throat> some of you who have known me for years know that I was an electronics technician. And sometimes I see things in electricity. And I look at pleats as frequency and waves and electricity. So as long as I kind of keep them straight, we can play with them. Go ahead and like, as I'm going forward, I'm really just trying to get a nice perpendicular square line. And if I need to move the line, I'll move the shirt a little bit and manipulate the fabric with my other fingers. Now glass blowers are really used to rolling a rod. Just rolling like a piece of glass in their hands. Now that dexterity is going to come in handy when you need to use all of your fingers to do tie-dye. So I think really glass blowers make great tie-dye artists because we kind of come equipped with uh, dexterity that some people don't always have. We can control our fingers in a way that we don't even know that we're controlling our fingers. It's, it's kind of weird and hard to describe, but we're going to go ahead and get across this. Now, all I got to do is finish the rest of this line without it folding up and getting crossed up. Now, I like to follow the left side. On For me, it's the left side. And this is where I'm going to tie my line. So I want to try to make sure that that's the line I keep. And I keep it nice and square. And just each little pleat, I'm taking very a lot of care to make sure that each pleat is going to the proper height. Now, I'm, it's starting to fold up on me a little bit, so I'm going to use my crutch. This is a uh, four by six piece of steel that I ordered off of Amazon. It's called a bench block. But I've duct taped it because over the course of the last few months, I've realized that living in a human environment, <laughs> living in a human environment, steel objects are prone to rust. So I duct taped it. So uh, we'll see how long that lasts. So we're good three months into this little steel block and now we got duct tape wrapped all around it so it doesn't stain my shirts. So little trick I learned along the way as I've gone. Along with hemostats, if you guys use hemostats, order heat shrink tubing pieces and you can uh, clean up those teeth marks on your pieces that you use hemostats with. A little nugget. You like that little nugget? Send me a little tip of roo to the PayPal roo at kydyes at gmail.com. Now we're coming into this last curve. You notice we're keeping this good line right here. 
I can use my steel block to apply a little bit of pressure and keep that line true. And just catch that crook around the corner. Now I use my other fingers over here, remember my glass blowing fingers? Tuck all this around and guide this line to exactly where I want it, to where I get this other last little half fold. And I'm good. Now all I gotta do is push this down, right? Gotta keep this line true. Applying a little bit of pressure and telling your lines where they gotta go ahead of time is really crucial. And it helps. Trust me, it helps. But it takes a lot of finger control. Because it will pop up. Woo! You guys catch that? Woo! That was. Woo! That guy jumped on me. Ah! Shit! There we go, there we go. But you can work it down. You can work it down. We're going to keep it okay, and I'm going to get this string on there and stop bullshitting. So here we go. Sinew, 75-pound test strength is what I like to use. <clears throat> now, like I said, I'm going to go, and I'm going to tie around the left side of this line. This first line, because what I'm doing is called a cross tie. I really just want to get all of these pleats in line. So I'm really just going to get, like, one really good pull. And I'm going to pull this all together. So I'm going to take my little uh, cheater brick. And I'm going to plop that right down on top of my line where I can still see it though. And I'm going to put that down I'm going to apply pressure. Alright, so I'm going to lean into it. Make sure you stretch your back. Oh, your wrists. Now you can edge up. And let's uh, boost. get up here on this. Now you can... You can pull from back here and you're gonna fuck up your string or you can come up here and roll, press down and just kinda of turn your shoulder. And then every time you get a little more tension back, you can kinda of roll up a little bit. If you don't have a lot of arm strength and you can't just do that and then know that you are you just pulled through three turns. Cause when I pull this up, I only got one line left and I can really just put my hand down roll this up and pull and I'll feel the last strand come in snug right before I get enough tensile strength to snap this line okay Look at this, this little needy bastard right there we're gonna go ahead and put that up right there and it seems a little thin so we're gonna give it just a little more control we're gonna get it another one two three turns good hand pressure and too much. See, that shit happens. And you can tell I got glass on my table. All right. <laughs> so that's the that's the first step to the cross tie. I got another good few steps left to go. Now I call it the cross tie because we got the first line, and now we're gonna cross it. Go ahead and clean this up real quick. I snap the line. I don't like having all this other extra excess sinew all over the place. Take that, throw it on the ground. Have your kids clean it up later. All right, so we've got our sleeves inside of one another, and we've got a good line to where we're going to be using. I'm going to go ahead and push this in and try to keep a, a low profile to where everything kind of keeps the same pleat height but I'm not really worried about the pleats really I'm just making sure that it's not too bulky mm. and I'm gonna set something down and I'm gonna tie over okay <coughs> now I'm gonna take a hit real quick I'm gonna explain the process right here I'm about to pull these lines with sinew and pull this line with sinew and I'm going to tie all the way to here but then I'm going to cut it and then I'm going to retie again and cross tie it hey Mitch I, I, I don't have a face to put on a shirt yet buddy but I did Wolverine last month or so oh man oh yeah this pipe is beautiful. It's wonderful. If you 
like glass, check out Five Glass on Instagram. F Y B G L A S S. All right, cool little pufferoo, and I'm back at it. This is why I love my job. I can sit here and medicate all day. <clears throat> so my first line is going to be the line that separates the gills from the cap. So I'm going to start on the outside and I'm just going to go ahead and get my pleats and keep them at about the same height as all the other pleats that we've done thus far. Pachow! Raul's done his own face. I, I'm I don't know I, I I can't I'm kind of scared to do my face you know like self portraits in art are, are a fucking big deal man like I don't know like that's that's a real challenging concept like yo draw your own face on your medium it's like shit okay but I mean if that that's a challenge I, would anybody even wear my face on a shirt Mitch, I know you talk shit, but, like, would you pay, you know, a couple hundred bucks to have my face on your fucking shirt and walk around and be like, yo, I know this guy or some shit? Like, people would be like, yo, why you got this guy and this bearded dude on your freaking shirt? Cool tie-dye, though, bro. I don't know. N nothing's out of the way. I'll try anything, I guess. As I get in, this is getting a little bit tighter, but I want to make sure that I get a good, clean line and that stays perpendicular to the line that I've already done. Okay. Right. Jesus. I love how the, the ideas are starting to come across a little more detailed. Like, I need a Roger the Alien tripping balls. Like, why not just Roger the Alien? You gotta have Roger the Alien with his, like, tongue out and, like, eyes all rainbow and shit. Like, is that what you mean? Paul, can't, you're tagging Paul? Oh, no. <laughs> I fucking know this guy, and he made this shirt. He made a self-portrait, and he only did it once. <laughs> and I'm the guy who paid $250 for that shirt. Notice how the price went up when uh, someone came out with a lower price than what I said at first? That's the way it works. You know, when art, when someone comes at you with a lower price, and you think... I like to raise my price. All right, so I'm closing in on this bad boy. Because it is hard, you know, it's all subjective and shit. All right, cool. So we're coming up closer to this line. Now, I have it on good authority. And when I put this line here and I pull this all back right there, and I keep a nice even line, it's going to break up real nice. All right, cool. Now, I put this thing here because eventually I'm gonna want to maneuver and get up underneath this line so I can cut it. Now, there we go. We get our little spot, we go across. Let's go ahead and pull this all together a little bit. If you need to, you can pull up your brick. Here we go. Here we go. Now we got the line set. Now we need to secure. All right. And we do the third one to make it pretty. Just like me. All right, cool. Get all these lines up. I like to use this brick when I can so that I can apply even pressure and a downward force a little easier. This thing works great for physics. So if you can get one, grab one of these bad boys. And when I pull it back at a certain tension, it just kind of snaps into place. It's really cool, right? So I got the first one there. I know this looks ridiculous, but I got it exactly where I wanted it to go. If I want to maneuver it just a little bit more, I can. And I'm going to secure it even more. We're going to 
drive this line home. I'm going to kind of really hammer this so that I've got enough to cling on to afterwards when I'm trying to wrap my cross. <coughs> Here we go. All right, now let's not forget that we have a whole other line that we left sticking out over here. Now, Nathaniel, all right, you ready for this? These gills, it's, re it's really just luck. So we're going to get on the back side of this, get served up and ready for our next line. <coughs> now, Nathaniel, watch. If you're still watching, if not, come back. Whatevs. Sean, what's good? You pop these up and get them kind of out of the way, and you've almost got a perfect line right to where you want to go. And you want to crease it up in between these two other lines. All right, put a little bit of that fabric underneath that piece of whatever, and you're going to come at it from another angle catch that bottom line. All right, Nate, you see that? When you get that into the crease, it won't flip up. You get a nice tight line on it. As it happened, I kept this thing from flipping. But I'm going to go ahead and cut this line because I don't want it anymore. Cut it. Now, it's bowed a little bit, but if you look on the back side, you've got your cross ties. Right? See that? A little closer. You got your cap, your gills, your stem. Okay? Now, flip this over, make sure that we're good to go. Let's pull this ruler on out of there. Now, I'm going to pull all of the fabric apart. Get the center. Now, I'm going to tie over this again. And this is how I get this shit to stick. Get it in there. Make sure you get all the way down in your line. Ah, oh, it's a pain in the butt. Come on. Get in there. I'm gonna press down. Huh. So what I'm doing there really is just securing this line again so that I can cut these strings. Take this, pull this, trim this, throw that, get the kids to come clean it up. 
for that tonight because it's too late. Sucks that I'm breaking my lines. I usually don't, but it happens. Get it on there enough to where it separates. All right. Now that I've got that down, I'm going to break it. I'm going to bend it in half. That's what I call breaking it. Break that fold so I can come in there. I give this too much pressure off. We're going to go ahead and we're going to secure these lines immediately. I'll tie over the nubs and push them towards the outside. Do the same with the top lines and make sure that you tie over those and get a good couple wraps in there so you can come back in on top of that. And this is going to give you this is going to give you an opportunity to get lines that most people can't. This is this is going to open up other doors. Don't just use this on mushrooms, okay? Use this on on, on like a fucking sword or, or or like an axe or like hey a pumpkin or something. You want to define the stem on the pumpkin? Dude, cross tie this bitch. It's kind of a pain in the ass, and you kind of go back and forth a little bit, but it's going to give you a line that is distinctly not a hemostat line, right here. Yeah, hey, Mitch, I, I never knew there was such a process with playing the fucking guitar, dude. But, you know, there's a science to it, you know. But with everything that you can do in the world, there's always you could do a little bit extra. Now, just, just to make it look a little cleaner, I'm going to pull these lines back over. I'm going to look on the other side and see. Look, I don't have a lot to play with on the other side because I really cut that close. I, if I can cut it halfway on both sides so that there's about an even amount of extra, that usually helps. Cross that down. Get a good tight line on that. All right. Now, that's going to be a distinct line around a mushroom. And there's going to be very kind of defined lines on the inside of this bad boy. Now, because I like it to be a little clean, since I got that thing secured, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim it off. Because I don't want to fuck with it anymore. Throw it over there. Get a good line. We're going to come back to you later. Now, I'm going to get doubled up fold up here in the middle, we're gonna get the, the gills, if you will, kind of isolated and make sure that the fabric's not touching as much. Right there. We're gonna try to make sure we're all spread out and nice and even. We're gonna do the same right here. For the stem. It's weird, like I can still see that this is the stem, this is the cap, this is the gills. Here's the top of the collar of the shirt that helps us reference when trying to remember where and what you're doing. Now, one of my big things that I'm hoping to do this fall, and I've been talking to a few smoke shops and uh, glass galleries around the country, is uh, I've been invited out to teach in a couple places, and now I'm kind of trying to plan a route. So if you're kind of in the Southwest, or Utah, or Colorado, and you have a smoke shop, or know somebody with a smoke shop or you want a private lesson in late September early October get with me talk to me let's see what's going on I'm gonna be out going through Las Cruces and then hopefully through Phoenix and then 
California. We're going to go down through San Diego, LA, and then up to Central California. Um, my buddy Fletch, if you guys remember him, he said he's going to go with me. And when he said he's going to do something, I believe he's going to do it. So you see me sharing his work. And if we could talk my other buddy Kagan into it, my God, all three of us go on in this class. And we're going to go out and, you know, it's going to be $500 per person. And you guys are going to get to watch us do what we do. And we're going to talk you through it. And you guys can bring out a camera if you want and share everything, whatever. But you come out, hang out. We're going to feed you two-day class. First day tie, late night die, next morning rinse out, and we got our, and our, our projects. All right, so now we have our mushroom, and now we have to do the extra. Now, from here on, it's up to you. I like to do, um, I like to do a spine. So let's, let's uh, make sure that everything's nice and evened up. Let's put something on the back of this and uh, make it worth just a little bit more money by putting just a little bit more work into it, you know? Because that's what a lot of people kind of take into tie dyes, like how much work is into it. You know, sometimes it comes out to who did it, but you know, a lot of times, it's like, how much work? How much sweat? What's the sweat equity put into this shirt? Mitch said he didn't understand there was such a process, but you know, there's a process, man, and it's scientific and it's fucking beautiful. So I could take this, I could take my back collar, find it, keep it perpendicular, and I kept this fold all the way down. So I'm going to flop this down, and we're, now we're doing the back. Now we're doing the back. But I'm not going to make it too serious. Because who's too serious? Not me. This guy's not too fucking serious. I like to fucking play. So I'm going to take this marker, and we're going to make a little wobble, little wobble wobble. And we're just going to kind of fucking draw a cool little line across the back. And we're going to cut a point, do a little sharp point in that thing, and then we're going to do it just kind of like a little brackets when we were in English class, you know, kind of bringing that shit back. English class, bring it back. Just so anybody knows, it's 9.30, I'm an American adult, it's 10.30 at night, I'm drinking. All right. Okay, cool. So, we're just going to pop this out real quick. Now... It's not about how much work you put into it. It's about what you put into it, man. If you put nothing but love into this shit, you're going to get nothing but love back. I don't know about this line. This one looks kind of weird. So I'm going to kind of fuck it up a little bit. We're going to go. Boop. Why not? Like a right angle in that bad boy. So square it up. You can kind of square it up by knowing your, your thing your tag on the back and making sure that it's even it's usually sin centered you know especially with this comfort colors shirt that I got from shirtspace.com if you guys haven't noticed there's a name drop going on and there's a little bit of a sponsorship going on they sent me a whole pack of sample shirts that over the next few months I'm gonna get to kind of test them out with you guys and we're gonna make videos but if you guys are tie-dye artists and you need a new supplier, be sure to check out shirtspace.com. And if you get a chance, message them on Instagram and tell them that you're going to be working with them from now on because I said so. Okay? Shirtspace.com because I said so. You tell them. And that's what we're doing from here on out. But yeah. We're going to give the same attention to the pleat height as we would on a design, but we're going to go straight on down, try to keep everything nice and in line, a little beep, boop, beep, boop, 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 probably go a little bit faster without tweezers. Now, it's not about how long it takes you to do something. Now, in the glass world, when it comes to pricing, we take how many years we've been working into consideration. Now, we also take other factors into consideration that not everybody necessarily does. But in tie-dyeing, it's usually people are like, yo, this is the materials times the time it took me to do this times the electricity, blah, 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 and stuff like that. But, yo, if I learned how to do something and I learned how to do something quicker, should I be punished because I can put out a couple more faster? 
Should I dock myself on pay because I learned how to do it quicker? Or I learned shortcuts that look clean or something like that? Like, that's something I don't get. But I'm working through it. <clears throat> As I bridge this little weird gap between glass and tie-dye and I learn how to straddle the world between them. Going out to Las Vegas was amazing because I got to meet a lot of people that I really look up to and then a lot of people that kind of like my work were like, yo, I like your work too. And I was like, holy shit, I like your work. You know, let's go hang out. And we did. And it was freaking cool. And I, you know, earned memories that, you know, I'm going to be able to remember for the rest of my life. Next time I'm going to go live. But we're going to get along this little spine right here, a little curvy spine, a little scoliosis, if you will. I'm not making fun of anybody with scoliosis, but, you know, I got a little crooked back. So, I don't know. I related. But what else? We're going to get through this guy. All right, cool. Now, we've got this little accoutrement to the, sh to the shirt, which we can use to contrast colors. And we can do a couple different things with this, depending on what you like and what you want to accomplish. Now, people who know me know that I love a scrunch and that I'm all about control and chaos. And so I like to have control over the chaos if I can. Go get another one, secure that bad boy. Now it's really neat because I'm going to do this other thing where I'm going to do the sleeve. And we're going to leave that sleeve just kind of sitting there because I like to leave my shirts to dry for, you know, a significant amount of time before I die. I'm getting to the end of tying up a whole bunch of shirts. So I'm thinking I'm going to go and take some videos of me dyeing and mixing dyes because that stuff's really boring. Mixing dyes. It is, does anybody want to come mix my dyes? Do you want to come mix my dyes? Somebody, come volunteer. Come hang out with me and mix my dyes for me because it. I don't like doing it. That's why I got a magnetic mixer so I can set it there and let it go. All right, cool. So the last little thing we're going to do, we're going to take these sleeves, and I'm going to do a little something, something on the sleeves so that they kind of match the spine. But I want to make sure that they're good and in line first and then see what kind of we got. Right? So we line up our sleeves, make sure that we've got them even because why not? We like to keep shit clean and even. Keep a nice frame. Here we go. Now, for the time that you guys have seen me put into this shirt, would you or would you not agree that it's worth a hundred dollars after it's died because that's in a whole ass other hour into this shirt oh i need to i need to draw a little line we're going to do those little uh english parentheses where when we used to uh phrase sentences i like that <laughs> little bring in school back let's let's make sure that we outline our sentences and make sure we know what the fuck we're saying before the fuck we say. Pause for the cause. Yo, Stephen J, what's good? Trace, you bring up a great point. Mitch, I love you, dude. I've known you since high school. Uh, Steven, you just missed me uh, tying up a mushroom cap with a little curvy radical spine, dude. Thanks for joining us, buddy. This guy's been really killing it lately. Dude, that banjo. Did you just do the banjo? Was that you? Steven, give me a response real quick. Because I saw that banjo and I was like, oh, god damn, that shit was clean. Yeah, I, ser I, I served with Alex um, uh, at Redstone Arsenal, and, and it's cool that he's back there in Huntsville giving me a chance to go back and be nostalgic. I'm going to come out there and hang out in Huntsville one of these days, and we're going to go tear it up at all the stupid bars around town that probably don't even exist anymore. 
But that's what I'm doing, man. Hey, if you want to get 10 or 15 people together for a class, let me know. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll travel to you, you know. And I'll teach you all firsthand. We'll work through some stuff. I'll stay for a couple of days. <clears throat> I'll show you everything I know. You know, if anybody wants to do that. Oh, Mark's disc golf, dude. I'm sorry, Steven. Jesus, I'm such a fucking asshole. Are you going to go see Billy Strings? Oh, word. That's what's good, dude. All right, cool. So, we got our last little flare piece put onto the sleeves. And we're going to wrap it. We're going to tie that bad boy up. We got a cool little sharp point in there. We're going to have some little sharp points, some little rounded edges gonna look like it's gonna look cool when you got the woobles you got the wooble woobles that's what I'm talking about anytime anybody's on mushrooms and they got those little wooble wobbles it's the woobles man enjoy those woobles get out there and enjoy it man all that good shit I make mushrooms because I prescribe to the stone ape theory and, uh, you know, I was really put on to this stoned ape theory by my buddy John Simpson. He's a glass blower. And I was really put on to his work just through his uh, presentation of his work and the way that he described it and everything. And it, and it really spoke to me. And, uh, you know, I looked it up. And, you know, the stoned ape theory is that, like, monkeys ate mushrooms. And because of that, we gained sentience and evolved into... Uh, the the homo sapiens we are today hold on i gotta try to get this thing loaded up because i can't see anything you're saying right now oh well. i'll just keep working all right before i uh let this guy go i'm gonna go ahead and uh gonna give it a little scrunch where we're gonna push it into the crevice of each one of these every opportunity that we get I'm just gonna get it in there weave it in and out give it some texture <laughs> Go. And we're gonna give it a, maybe like a triple band. Triple band should be pretty self-explanatory, I hope. You know, especially with the movement in my hand right there. All right, cool. Oh, probably want to get another one on there. I like to push them in and push them down so that they kind of catch a good secure holding. That guy's going to stand up and we're going to create it's kind of a spot for it. There we go. Push all that in there. Stuff it. Scrunch it. I wish I had some cool music going. Like I really wish I could. But I don't want to fuck up these things and like mess up with carpet or copyright law or whatever. I'm probably going to end up finding maybe some cool jazz or something that's like free license or whatever. Pull that out. Set that out. Stand it up. And then work in from the outside. And it should all just kind of stay together. If you give it a nice scrunch where you're pulling it up. Pulling it up. Scrunching it. Pushing it. Trying to keep it at a certain height instead of just bonding it up, pulling it up, pulling it out, pulling it out, pulling it up. Boop -a -doo. All right. Really just manipulate everything in here so that you get as flat of a surface area as you can with as much rumples of the pleats as you can get as well the more rumples the more dye distribution the more everything's just kind of slammed up next to each other pressing up against each other and making uh dye transfer into different spots when you have a bunch of crevices you can add a bunch of little black dots to it it does a bunch of little cool different things especially if you thicken that black dye you know oh man if you guys want to learn thicken dyes Check out my homie Fletch, dude. Like, Fletch Sigmund at Salt and Sweeties Tie-Dye. He's got this really cool tutorial where he explains how to thicken dyes. And it, and it, it helped me 
come up with a thick and die recipe that works. Maybe one of these days I'll share it. <clears throat> but I don't know. I don't want to mix dyes on live. It's fucking boring. But I don't know. Maybe I'll explain it. I don't know. I don't know. I, I really feel like that's some of the information you should have to pay for. Because, like, that, that he, he did a lot of experimenting to get to where he's at with that thick and die. A lot of these guys have. And I'm not going to be the guy to go and put out a bunch of information that people are out there selling. So, I'm out here offering it for free for tips if anybody would like to tip. At my PayPal is uh, kydyes at gmail.com really nice few people have been so kind to uh, contribute in the past and I really appreciate it it's always really neat to see a friendly name Steven Steven did that you got the yeah I was gonna say Steven has, has contributed a couple times and I really appreciate that Steven thank you um uh, really helps me want to want to keep doing this but you know honestly I just want to make sure that everybody can find a uh, something cool to maybe work off of and contribute to their style you know what works for me may not work for everybody or maybe what works for me somebody's gonna be like yo here i'm gonna do this like a hundred times fucking better and i'm gonna be like yo that's dope man because <clears throat> at the end of the day all we're trying to do is make cool shit can i get an amen all all right, we're going to slap some bands on here and get some control of all this chaos. <clears throat> all right. We'll go from the other angle. And try to reel this bad boy in just enough. Wow. Y'all should see me in Vegas. I was, I was in my element. When I was in South Korea with the Army... Man, I, I thought the I thought those were the wildest parties I ever been to, and and then I went to Vegas, and then I realized that you know when I was in South Korea, those may have been the wildest parties I'd ever been to. So I don't know. I'm going back to Vegas in July. We're gonna see. We're gonna see what's up. See how these glass blowers do it. So far, they're okay at partying. Gotta make sure that they all get breakfast. You know. Oh, man. But, yeah, really excited about going back to Vegas. Uh, word of some really cool parties coming up. Huh? What the fuck? So, my fan just died somehow. I don't know, but that was a nasty sound. That shit was nuts. All right, so getting a couple of cross sections. I like to kind of work off of a, a triangular structural kind of engineering kind of thing. I don't know, I, I, I read a blurb of a book or something that was like, yo, hey, bridges that with had triangles or some shit were stronger, so I don't know. I don't know, it, it sounded smart, so I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. No, I went to college for engineering or anything, dude. Boop, 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 boop. All right, I'm just going to try to throw a little more rubber bands on here so we can get just a little more control over this bad boy. And then that's about it. Like, honestly, now I just got to let this motherfucker sit and chill. But I'm just going to throw this in the batch, and it's going to sit. I've got about 30 or 40 other shirts that I have to tie right now, so some people might be waiting. Okay, now remember when I said I could go crazy on the back of this? Now, since I didn't really line it up a whole lot, I could come in here and really line out the pleats and get all the bins in there and have a lot of fun with it. But I'm going to try to just, just make it as messed up as possible. I'm just going to smash it up and hope that it looks kind of wild and different and just whatever. I don't know. I'm probably going to apply a fire color pattern to this as I have on a lot of these other 
very same style shirt that I've done right here, which I'm about to die more of here soon. I've had some drawings since before I went to Vegas. So I, I will have some more stuff up on my store here soon. It's just really been wild. I took everything down and then threw everything into a duffel bag and just kind of hoped and prayed. And, uh, you know, I, I walked out of Vegas with money, which was fucking cool. So here we go. All right. That's a shirt. And uh, once it's dyed, you know, I'm going to post about it online somewhere, probably. But, uh, yeah. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me, tolerating my bullshit. I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to upload this on YouTube. Or if it lets me save this, I'll probably send it over to my buddy Sean. And, uh, Sean, if you're still watching this, buddy, I really appreciate it if you... Uh, cut it down and edit it dude i will definitely share your work on my uh page if you can continue to help me out in this department or if you know anybody else that's really helpful well yeah this guy the other day the, uh, a couple weeks ago i was having problems with the live video it disappeared it just kind of like it, i wasn't able to save it but he was able to go to the live video and extract it from facebook and make it work and i was just like yo Thank you. So, uh, I don't really have an idea what I'm going to do next week, but if anybody has an idea you want to throw at me since I'm done now, we can kind of ch chat and talk. We'll edit this out whenever I add it to YouTube. Just whatever. Well, thanks, Nathaniel, man. I, I honestly, I did this uh, tutorial for you, buddy. Um, uh, you have supported me in the past, and I really love seeing your uh, growth with those droppers dude keep keep dropping them droppers buddy people like that stuff uh, uh, you'd be shocked but a lot of people like acid you know I, I didn't know until i did those shirts you know all the people came out of the woodwork and i was like oh rad cool does anybody want to stick around you guys want maybe uh, another tutorial to see what else is up let me take another dab for a second and uh, see what you guys think. I got some more shirts over here. You know, uh, Shirtspace provide Shirtspace.com uh, provides me all the shirts that I need for these tutorials, so it's it's really nice. And I, I don't I don't sell them, but I could if you guys want to buy that shit. <clears throat> I'm not gonna do the dripper dropper. I don't know. Somebody throw some money in my PayPal. I'll, I'll do the dropper. Fuck it. Let's go. I'm having a good night. Obviously, I'm, I'm dabbing and, you know, sipping on some sip sip. Clayton Fraser says, drip, drip, trip, trip. All right. All right. Here we go. Welcome to another episode of Kaida. Shut the fuck up, man. All right, cool. So. I got another one of these uh, medium comfort color shirts. I don't know if you guys have worked with these yet. They're freaking dope, man. They're really soft and they hold dye really well. Uh, that one's that one's a fruit of the loom. This guy right here, but yeah, whatever. So, well, here, let's pull out what I'm gonna do real quick. I'm gonna since I'm waiting on this guy to come by here and personally pick this one up. Yeah, dude, like, I'm going to set this guy down right here for y'all to hang out and watch. <clears throat> and I'm going to set up a dab off my Soulfire glass. If you guys go check out uh, Instagram, check out Soulfire glass, S-O-L-F-I-R-E glass. This is probably the most clear, unworked piece that she's got. Her work is fucking amazing. All right, so I'm going to put something in this bad boy. We got a really cool local plug, and uh, he tolerates our craziness. One point during the quarantine, he was like, yo, y'all, you, uh, you, you pay my rent. <laughs> and I was like, sound about right. <laughs> Here we go. We're going to throw a little bit of this uh, little live rosin or whatever the fuck. Something he gets from California or whatever he says. I don't know. You never know what plug says. Just kind of got to take their word for it. That's why people want you to go to dispensaries. 
So they can put a label on something and say, hey, this is what I say it is. Yo! Oh, man. Okay. Yo, y'all see that Anthony McGuire dude right there? This guy almost died with me. Like, legit almost died with me in a foreign country. <laughs> Not doing anything we were supposed to or anything, but, you know, driving around in a foreign country. It's kind of dangerous, especially in the middle of a blizzard. Especially after you haven't slept for fucking hours because you dipped out to go snowboarding at the most southern point of the country. Man, you bring back memories, brother. What's good? All right. We are smoking and choking and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna tie this one up because I'm gonna go ahead and do a fucking encore because I'm nice, man. And we can probably edit this down to something else. So I am not willing to share the honeycomb tech yet because that is not my technique. Uh, anybody who knows that technique knows that that's Jake Rollos. And I don't know if he's really let that out there or not, but I have a few other friends that do this. But I didn't do this work. That was Fletch. Now, y'all want to badger Fletch and then get him to do another tutorial? Maybe, maybe he'll do it, you know? But he'll probably have to pop up another tutorial and that's okay and i'm sure he'd be willing to throw up another tutorial or a supplement to the tutorial that he's already got out dude I, I i almost died like four times in fucking korea dude being a drunk in foreign countries is not really safe Oh man, I've got terrible lungs, but thank you for bearing with me as I get my head right to give away another beautiful piece of my art. All right. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, I just don't feel like it's my place to uh, give away certain techniques that I don't frequently use. <clears throat> one <clears throat> because i struggle with that <clears throat> and then two because i just i just i don't feel it's my place to like uh a lot of things that i'm teaching you guys <clears throat> <clears throat> i picked up off of uh mr tie-dye and just kind of kept pushing and exploring and you know just spending more time on that it, <clears throat> I learned a lot off of uh, off of YouTube initially, and then I started collaborating with a lot of you guys, <clears throat> and we learned some other things together through experimentation, because that's what we do through open sourcing our art and not being gatekeepers to certain techniques. But while there are others out there charging for certain techniques, I'm not going to be teaching it, okay? For now, you only get my shit. Sorry, but thank you. <coughs> All right, we're going to turn this guy inside out. Uh, again, just flip that guy real quick. <coughs> um, uh, before I started doing uh, teaching, I, I really wanted to talk to Mr. Tie-Dye about it because I just I felt respect was due. Um, the man's out there putting what he does out there for a living and showing others how to do it and honestly taught thousands of people how to tie-dye and really made this medium explode, which was fucking cool. <coughs> I'll tell you, like the last three, four years of tie-dye have just been amazing. When I first saw it, I was just like, man, I ain't never seen tie-dye before. And this guy like hustled me for like, he was like, yo, man, if you give me that shirt you're wearing and $10, I will tie-dye your shirt. And I was like, oh, rad, cool. I was blowing glass with him, and I was like, all right, cool, man, here you go. I gave him 10 bucks and my shirt. And then I was just like, yo, for like three, four months, I was like, can I have my shirt back? Like, I'll just, here, I'll, I, you can keep the 10 bucks. Give me back my shirt. And he gave me this chewed up, spit up, like tulip dye piece of shit. And I was just like, ah, oh, fuck, man, fuck tie dye. Fuck tie-dye artists. 
Oh my god damn, that is fucking horrible, man. <clears throat> so my first taste of tie-dye was, man, that's a hustle. That guy got me. He went and ate himself a sandwich, and I didn't eat my fucking sandwich because I gave him my $10. So I didn't see tie dye for a few more years after that. All right, we're gonna catch this. You gonna see me? Uh, there you go. We're gonna go for another right down the middle. Sure. Find your spot. Pinch it. Pick it up. Flip it. Lay it down. We don't have to fuck with the sleeves yet. We can fuck with them later. All right. Now, the only thing I want to do is make sure that I actually got a good center. And I'm going to get up underneath here and line up my seams. Because I'm OCD. Whoop. There you go. Pull this. Bop. Bop. Boop. There we go. That's magic. That shit works. Right there. Cool. All right. So I got this little magic ruler. Here, my cheat right here. And I, it's, <laughs> what is this? Fucking eight inches, little steel, fucking little steel ruler guy. Boom. This, I like to set it up straight right here. And take my orange marker. All right, cool. So what, what you want to do is kind of find an object, which is a good reference, because, like, if you ever see me do my guitars, like, I'll, I'll put, a, like, a pack of cigarettes to throw a pickup. I almost did a guitar. And if you know what, if I want to stay up later on the night, I ought as well just do a fucking guitar. If you guys want to share this video and tell people that I'm going live, and if I see fucking 50 people on there, I'm going to stay on. So... That's what we're going to do. All right, cool. So we're doing a dropper. So I'm going to go ahead and get my first line. Just kind of get that. It just kind of defines my line. Just flip that over. Kind of comes down at a taper. I'm going to get kind of a quarter circle up here. Over here trying to pick my fucking beard hairs out of the way. All right. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and do like the rounded bit of the cap. All right, cool. So that's the top of it. And now we've kind of got to do this little bit of a dropper. Make sure the bottom of it is square and perpendicular to your axis. And if you ever seen like an eyedropper, you kind of want to have like the little cap on there. So I like to kind of get over here and give myself a little inch overhang. Make sure that my ruler lines are squared up. And I'll get my little, little cap spot. Drop it down just about a quarter inch, half inch, a little bit, whatever. Oop. Squared up. Right there, cool. Now, you could like color this up so that you can see like the reference once you tie it up and see where these lines go. If you kind of want to learn what these lines are doing. All right. All right, and then down here at the bottom, we're just gonna do like a little teardrop. Boop. Kind of clean that up. Make it look. Try to get it like a, like a, like a little half circle kind of thing with a little golden ratio shit and all that, whatever. Math and whatnot. Trying to make it look like a little drop. Because that's where the drugs are. Right there in the drop. Give it a good taper. Point. Whew. All right. Now you take a break. All right. This is, this is where you got to focus and get ready for your next energy. Honestly, if I were a machine, I would just get right into it. But honestly, I'm a fallible human being, and i got to read through some of these uh, comments. Doesn't seem like you guys are saying much, but I appreciate you guys for sticking by. We've got 12 people this time when I looked up. So if you guys can, go ahead and share, like. 
Maybe one of you guys pop this up in the tie-dye group. See what happens. See who we piss off. It'd be kind of fun. Yo, so today here in uh, Louisiana, we just passed a law saying that we can smoke medical flower weed, which is really fucking cool. So that's why I'm smoking flower, because now we're medically capable of doing it. It's cool. Now we can smoke flower. Well, I mean, as of January 1st, but they're not going to fucking do anything to me. Whatever. Well, Steven, I really appreciate your support, and I've really seen your work grow. I'd really like to see your work grow. Dude, like when like when you got that chef fucking tutorial and you busted out that that tapestry, dude. God. I remember that. That was strictly you, buddy. And that shit was fucking cool. <coughs> Alright, so another little trick I like to play with are these little binder clips. Alright? If you're going to have to do a multiple kind of item thing and you want to keep everything kind of in place while you tie something else, throw some clips on it. Let that shit sit in its spot, right? When I want to be a little bit more meticulous with items, I will definitely clip things up. Clips really come in handy. <coughs> Dog, thanks. Thanks. Let's see what's up. Hey. Welcome to the stream if you guys are new. Right now we are tying up this shirt. The acid dropper. Okay? I already got this thing tied in half. And we're getting to it. So I'm gonna start right here at this base one. Now I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a full pleat right here. And that's just gonna be enough to get me on there. And this is how I get my corners. This is the first one. It's very important. I go at a right angle. Straight from there. And I pinch it up. And I see where they sandwich together. And that's a perfect angle right there. Now I keep that together. And I'm just going to pleat along there. And keep. I'm going to keep my line. Here we go. Here we go. Let's see if I can get... I wish I had better light and cameras, people. I'm sorry. If anybody's a videographer and wants to come out here and fuck it up, come on. I need employees. Any of you guys want to come and work with me, we can bust out some fucking wholesale orders. I swear to God. I tell y'all, if you, any of y'all professional tie-dye artists want to band together, we can come up with a brand. Whew. Some heaters. I know some fucking thirsty shops out there when I go out to Las Vegas, they're all like, wholesale, 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 wholesale. I don't have enough hands to feed them. Steven, come on down to Baton Rouge. But wait, 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 where are you at? Are you up in Canada or some shit? All right. So really, I'm just really going to kind of focus on keeping this line straight, squared up, perpendicular, all that cool math noise and everything in between. About a 1 16th of an inch pleat. Because that's really just a good spot. And you can really get in between some of these ones that want to be difficult. I want to get in here to this. Yeah, I want to make sure that this corner's up. And I'm going to get a little 45 on there and turn that corner. Get aggressive with this shit, man. Like, honestly, you can do a lot with this fabric as long as you keep certain pressures in your hand. And it's great for dexterity control. And you're learning how to keep certain pressures in your hands. Get around that corner. I like to keep these tagged out. And this is another way. Fold the corner to 45 and just keep the 45 poked out. Get underneath there. You know, geometry was my favorite class in high school. I don't know if Mitch was in school with me or not. But, uh... If you could pay for me to do the logo on your record label, bro, what's good? Uh, and Steven, yo, talk to me soon, bro. Alright, cool. Catch that other outside thing? I don't remember what the fuck I was saying. I got caught up in reading. Keep this all even. 
And you can either cross tie these, but honestly, I, like, I just like to throw a, a hemostat on there because it's quicker. It's just easier. And the defined line that you need between gray and black is really not as much of a big deal as you need it to be like it would be on a mushroom. Yeah, so Mitch, I don't know if you were in high school with me or not, but geometry was like my favorite fucking class. And I gave that teacher hell. I, I as, a, as a server, years later, I came across him at a bar and he was like, you were one of my fucking favorite but most hated fucking students I ever had. Because I understood what the fuck he was saying and I would just feed him back some bullshit and he, I would always talk shit in the middle of his class. It, it frustrated the shit out of him. I really tested his patience. Because I was ADHD. You were in biology with me? Who was that? Fucking Mr. Smith? That fucking weirdo? Oh, man. Hey, Moy. What's up? What's good? What's everybody? What? You all... Damn. We got people watching now. What's good? How we doing? Thank you for joining me this evening. I guess I just need to go live for longer. It was Mr. Smith. My brain's not broken. But I remember that guy was fucking weird. Yeah, Anthony, send me the label, brother. See what's good. All right, cool. <coughs> Scissors. Let's cut this guy up. Now, all right, cool. Let me get some hemostats real quick. Shit, while I was over there, I saw this other fucking cool pipe that I got while I was out on my travels. Whoo! Shit, man, look at that. My buddy Pedro made that. It's really cool that my best friends make the coolest fucking shit out there. All of them. So cool. I'll show you guys, since we got more people in here looking right now, I'll show you guys the uh, crypto bong here in a second, too. If you guys want to see, I don't know. Are you guys even give a shit about my bongs? I'm going to start collecting more glass. But here we go. Now, look. Some of this shit right here, you just kind of want to pull it out. Pull it in. Pull it out. You can really manipulate it. Make sure you're not going to catch some of this fabric in there. And the last thing I'm going to do on this is like just really apply this hemostat. And there we go. We bust that line. And instead of doing a cross tie, we save ourselves about 20 fucking minutes. Check that out. That's one of those tricks. Cool. So now we done that. <clears throat> we don't need these clips. Let's get this dropper done. Check this out. Let's get to work. Anybody want to come work for me? I'll teach you guys how to do this shit, and we'll 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 bust up against these smoke shops. We'll hit Vegas. We'll set up booths cross country. We'll teach classes, dude. I'm getting hit with all kind of shit, dude. What's good? Could you die a fucking brain with binoculars with money in it? Jesus fuck, Anthony. Like, could you do that? I I. Okay, I'm going to tell you I can, but that shit's going to be really fucking expensive, brother. Jesus, no, I don't remember anything that guy fucking said. Did a fucking Puma follow that guy in the snow? Jeez. See, this is why I wish we had, like, better, like, cameras back in the day. Some of this shit would have been nuts. Like, why don't they film some of these high school classes and just fucking teach kids this shit? I don't know. Like, anyway, we're doing a dropper. Alright, cool. So we're gonna get up really close to this, and it's gonna you're gonna it's it's gonna be a pain in the ass. But you can move some of this other fabric out of the way, really, just kind of by pinching it up, and you'll get a little cleaner advance to an awkward angle. So, you just kind of boop, boop, boop. Right, we can go all the way up into that corner and I'm gonna pull all this other fabric back and hold it a whole ass other way. I'm gonna use the bottom of my tweezers to 
get right where I want it. And we're going to get as close as we can to that dropper. That's some of that fucking magic right there. That's that goal. <laughs> no, I don't I don't I don't need a new camera. I need somebody who knows how to fucking work a computer and a camera together, dude. Like what I need is a fucking team, to be honest. Like honestly, dude, going out to Vegas fucking opened my eyes, man. There's so much money to be made in tie-dye people. Like I'm what I what I'm putting out right now is gold. Like come on up, come on out with me to Vegas. Like book a room. In the end of July, I'll be out there with glad with uh, champs. Come say what's up. I'm not gonna have a booth. I'm gonna have a duffel bag, and I'm giving everybody of the winners a fucking torch shirt. All the winners are getting a fucking kai dye at champs this year. <laughs> young Jamie, who the fuck is Young Jamie? What show is this? The stony glass, why don't you just come out here and fucking blow glass and do tie-dye with me, man? I'm sure we could probably throw down some cool rigs. Like That's what's good. Like we, we can go into any we can go to any city in this country and fucking find homies and throw down. Alright, cool. So we got both the dripper and the dropper. <laughs> the drip and the meds all up in one thing cool all right hey mitch if you want to stick around and share all this with your friends and tell everybody i'll, I'll tie up a fucking guitar too because i like making those guitars i made a few of them today for a really close friend all right i've been tying shit all day that's why my house looks like shit see all the the, the shit on the floor Damn it. Look all sloppy. But whatever. I'm a fucking whoop. This is how we roll. Alright, cool. So I got the sleeve. We're gonna throw something else on this. Throw a little spice in it. <coughs> Line it up. Give it options. Manipulate it. Dude, Vegas is uh, ch champs. To look up champs. Dude, yeah. Like, Steve, dude, you get it. This, this house is a mess. I've got fucking kids. And I'm a, and I'm a kid. Boop, 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 boop. Using tools to get what you want. Off of that works. There we go. Let's let's do a straight line on this. Cool, so we're gonna do both of these lines at the same time. So that we get even pleats. Ooh, shit, you said spice it up. So I was like, I'm gonna do two lines at a time. <laughs> but I was an efficient machine. I can just fucking go, 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 go when prompted and properly motivated. Smoke me, motherfucker, I bet. And you can't smoke a rock, right? This is my PT. 
No option to share? Fuck it. Y'all just enjoy it. I'll share it later on YouTube. Cool. We'll just leave that up to do something cool with later. And let's get this fucking spine done. Wind up at the bottom. We got a clean line on the back. I don't want to do anything clean. I just want to do homie shit with my homies. Wait, how to go? How to do how, hood rat shit with the homies? It's like the glass blowing motto. I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to do whatever I want. Smoke weed. Be barefoot. Whoop, whoop. What is my YouTube? It is uh, Kai Dyes. Because that's my name. Kai Dyes. And uh, I like to do fucking uh, tie-dye. And um, I like to get high. Alright, cool. We're going to do that. We're going to bust this up real quick. We're going to give it a little bit of higher pleat. So, we're going to go with like a half inch pleat on this guy. So that the colors can kind of run down in between on both sides. So we can hit it with a different color. So we get a little bit of a blend. And if we tie it up anticipating that. And me knowing, I'll know. This shit's like a little higher pleated than before. So I'll just know. I need a camera that's like this on my fucking hat or some shit. Like, so I can go like this. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't want to do this shit. Anthony, come on. Wait, where the fuck do you live? You don't tell me you're on the fucking Pacific Northwest. Are you not still up in Seattle, are you, Anthony? No way. How are you out of weed? I'm in fucking Louisiana. Like, they're, like... I'm in fucking Louisiana. And we still got weed. Like, I don't, I don't, you're, in, you're in Nebraska? Like, you're in Omaha? Isn't Warren Buffett in fucking Omaha, dude? Don't you guys have, like, hella weed? What the hell? You should. We, dude, I'm so stoked. We just passed flour. Finally, we can, we can smoke fucking flour. It's worth getting a medical card in this state. Oh, shit. Okay, you guys want to do the plug after this? Yo, we could do the plug shirt after this. Let me finish this up. Well, weed does kill kids, but, like, it's it's not the cannabis weed. It's, it's usually, like, uh, you know, scopolamine or some other fucking terrible you know, weed else out there. What the fuck? Weed does not kill kids. Right? Not like I know or anything, but... Alright, so at this point, you could either hobo die this shit... Don't ask me about that. You want to hobo die this shit? You can just hang this thing like this. And like this from three different points, right? And you don't even have to tie it up. You don't even have to tie it up. You can just drip dye all over this bitch. And it's done, right? But that's not my hustle. That's not how I rock. And we know this. So we're going to scrunch it up. But we're going to do a little taller pleats on these scrunches. Because I want to get it done sooner I want to get to this other shirt because now I'm kind of excited to do a plug shirt. You want to be the plug? Get you the plug. But be the source by being the outlet. <laughs> be the plug's plug. <laughs> All right, let's talk about something else other than what the fuck Anthony McGuire is talking about. God damn it, dude. Shit. 
Doc, Mitch, I tell you, my plug is what's up. Dude, it's you got swamp weed. No, man, they fly this shit in from anywhere around the country just like anybody else does. Whew. Actually, shit. I'm in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at a red stick. Come on down. I mean, I can set up a private lesson. Got a cool little garage. I also blow glass. If you want to learn how to blow glass, hit me up for a blowing glass lesson. Those are fun, too. Let's not talk about that, Steven. <laughs> All right, let's talk about being legal. <laughs> But yeah, fuck yeah. Support your local black market. Fuck dispose. Fuck uh, government taxed, heavy taxed weed. If you got a good plug, support your fucking local plug. <laughs> Homie, what's up? I mean, that's how you gotta be, dude. Fuck everything. What the shit, dude? You guys are killing my... Internet fade. So my shit's too slow. All right, here we go. Get some more rubber bands. Like again, I cross, I cross action these a lot. Yeah, don't ever say anything over UPS. Like that's just retarded. Don't, don't do that shit. Um. It was a terrible word to use. I'm really sorry about that. Right? What's up, Tyler? What's good, buddy? This dude got an octopus off of me, dude. Man, you need to uh, send me more pictures of that shit so we can make some prints of it or something, dude. Make some t-shirts off that shit. You know what I need to do is make a t-shirt of fucking Tyler Needham bent over doing fucking, uh, showing off his underwear that fucking Kagan made. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that on a t-shirt and I'm gonna advertise that over Facebook and I'm gonna put like $50 on advertising it over two days. What do you think about that, buddy? Hahaha. <laughs> All right, cool. We're going to make this spine pretty basic. We're going to do the same thing over here for this. The dripper dropper. There's a lot that you could do with this drop, okay? Like, if you guys are, like, pretty good with, uh, say, uh, the ripple or something, you can totally ripple this little guy out. Just saying. But I'm just going to scrunch it because I like to scrunch a root. That's just what I do. Mm -hmm. Is pretty fun. Get on in there with the triple band, man. I love rubber bands because I'm able to get in, get out, let them sit, and then I can, I can put more on there or whatever. I don't need to fuck with a string. I don't need to come in with no scissors no later. I can just let it be. Let it be. All right, last little thing up here. I'm going to do a little triple band. All right, so Mitch wanted to know why glass to tie-dye. Well, I still love fucking glass, and I still blow glass here and there. Um, uh, 
here and there. Like, honestly, I haven't blown glass in a few months, but going to Glass Vegas was like a real big eye opener. Like, yo, you need to blow some more glass. I need to hang out with my buddies and be able to be like, yo, I, I do more than just shirts, guys. <laughs> and kind of felt like the little brother tagging along with all these fucking ballers and. They're like, no, your work's cool too, buddy. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, thanks. You know, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's really neat that I, I know these people and I've watched them come up. And uh, being able to transfer the skills from glass blowing to tie-dye, I mean, that's that's been a game changer. I have a little more dexterity and uh, finger comprehension maybe because of years spent rolling glass. I don't fucking know. But if you guys want glass, I've got some. I mean, shit. I make the stuff. I burn it. I melt it. Uh, tie-dye is not, it's not just that tie-dye is easier to sell. It's like you can do tie-dye in the air conditioning. Have you ever been in a Texas fucking garage? In like August when it's like 115 fucking degrees outside, but then you're standing next to a kiln that's like a 1,050 degrees behind a fucking torch is 2,700 degrees while you're rolling glass with a radiant temperature that's rotating in your hands at whatever fucking degrees. That shit's hot, but you can do air, you can do a, a tight iron air conditioning. So it's a really cool thing to do if you blow glass and you need to take a break. Don't burn your fucking brain cells out. Take a break and make some tie-dye. All right, what the fuck do we got here? Another medium shirt. By our friend at Custom Colors. What's good? Here we go. All right. So... <clears throat> We're going to do this guy. Right here. <clears throat> the only reason I'm even going to do this is because my buddy Mitch said he was still watching this shit. So in order to maintain his attention and his loyalty and the fact that he's going to go back out to our hometown where we came up together and tell everybody, be like, holy fuck. This guy can turn a t-shirt into a fucking guitar. Dog, check this shit out. All right, we're going to make that right now. All right. So if you love me, <clears throat> send me something to PayPal like you would support your uh, best friend over there on OnlyFans. Send me a tip. You know, I had thought about doing this on just OnlyFans and making everybody sign up to do OnlyFans. In order to follow me. I'm still thinking about it. Just saying. Alright. So this one is an asymmetrical tie-dye design. And the moment that I learned that I could do a line from right here to right here and here to here in different angles, this shit fucking broke my brain. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. I'm going to sub it like $50 a month. So, I hope you guys are ready to come correct. And you're going to have to watch me wear like a fucking bow tie. And bikini. Whew. And I'll do dabs, too. Now, her Twitch is pretty cool, too. Now, it's not a bad idea. I really don't want to stand around in a bikini and a bow tie because I fucking hate bow ties. All right, so Mitch, I don't know, I don't know the terms for all these fucking things on a guitar, but I'm going to do my best, okay? Because all I know, I know a trumpet, and I, I, yeah, I could probably do a trumpet tie-dye, but I want to use things that I use in everyday life. This is a level and a good straight edge, so I'm going to go straight down, about right there, and then we're going to... And we're going to move this over just a little bit. Get a little bit of an angle. Come on down, but not too far. 
Give it just a little bit of neck space. Wait, 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 wait. Fuck, I fucked up. Okay, here we go. While we still got that, I'm going to pull out my pack of smokes. Get a good angle on it. Now I'm done. Here we go. I'm going to catch my pickup. Cool, we're gonna throw a little, little angle pickup on there. And then whatever, are these called pickups? I don't know what the fuck that is. But whatever, that's how we do a guitar. Now I'm gonna take my little dab jar. Voila, there we go. Now we kind of have an outline of what the fuck we're gonna do. So I like to make sure that the seams are even because meticulousness is a side effect of my problems. And I got a tie-dye problem. All right, so they're called pickups. Thanks, Steven. <laughs> All right, so I've got two circles on one straight line. I'm going to find that line and just kind of get it. Right? Pick these up. Make sure my line is straight. Get a good center on these. All right. Cool. Now I got two little fucking circles. Now earlier I turned a couple of these into <clears throat> a couple of mandalas. That takes up a lot of shirt space, kind of fucks up everything. So we're just gonna do a basic little circle. Same rules every time. Three three turns. Pull tight. There we go. Secure that bitch down. <laughs> Don't start smoking cigarettes. Just get get a deck of cards. Get a fucking deck of cards to do that with. <laughs> Jesus, no, don't start smoking for that. Shit. I gotta quit smoking. That shit's awful. Like, I fucking hate it. But at the same time, it's all I know, and it's all, I fucking love it. So it's a miserable fucking thing. Yo, I'm with Mitch over here. Don't, don't start smoking. I'm like, yo, I got you, dude. No, don't do that. I'll send you an empty pack for five or seven bucks if you'd like. You know what? I'll ship you a pack of empty LMs for ten dollars, bro. I'll even sign the pack. <laughs> no, <laughs> you fucking. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Dumb shit, dumb shit, dumb shit. Die. All right, cool. <clears throat> cool. So we got our knobbies. Knobby knobs down. Let's get a good little half on this uh, pickup since it's inside of our lines. Want to get good corners on it. Work. I like to work all the way up to where I can like pinch the corners together. And once I can pinch that corner together, that's it. You are mine. Catch that 45. Send me packs of pre-rolled joints to sample, and I'll do them online. I want to be sponsored by weed companies. Are you fucking kidding me? 
By the way, I got this shirt from shirtspace.com. And if you get uh, $59 worth of blanks, they will ship that shit for free. And I'll tell you, they ship quick. And I'm about to do a little series here soon off of a sample pack that they sent me so that I can show you guys what works. So check out shirtspace.com. <laughs> Back to work here. We cut those corners really quick and let me get those three lines down secured. Pull. Secured. Good to go. Let's do one more little thing. I'll tell you, if I had to start saving my empty cigarette packs so that I could sell them so that you guys can get a bottom pickup. I'm, I'm going to be really fucking stoked, but at the same time, I'm going to feel like the guy who uh, made, uh, what, what are these called? Uh, is the guitar or the shroom more difficult? I mean, it really depends on the application. You can do the shroom instead of doing the cross ties. You can do hemostats. The guitar has a lot of inside technical work like this it's a hor it's a it's a diagonal little pickup thing and i don't have an exact line so i'm just going to go ahead and like pick it up right check this watch this fucking shit right here i'm going to go over here and i'm going to pick up this guy i'm going to get this guy and i'm going to get this guy i'm going to spit inside of it and look at that, I got Doop. done of that. Look at that shit. Two folds, one tie. I can just press all the fabric in there, get a nice half in there. Uh, You know, normally I'd be like watching like Rick and Morty or the fucking Simpsons or just something. Pick up the pickups. We're going to double the pickups. And tie both sides together. But you can just really just do it like a, a, a thicker, higher pleat, like a half inch high pleat. And as long as you keep it all together, it's going to show up. And it, no one's going to know but you and me. Here we go. Get this corner. Thin it down and we got that. So that's two pickups in one tie. That's why I like these guitars because I can kind of play with different ties. If I want, there are... Probably good six or seven different ways how you can tie these pickups. All right, so now all we got to do is the two outside lines, right? So we got left side, right side, and then right here we've got the brake line, but the brake line is going to happen when these guys kind of fold up together and pleat up, and then all that shit's going to come down, and it's going to be a little bulge. Let me see here. Get ready for this part. What are we talking about? Dude, you wouldn't fuck this up, dude. You just really, you're, you're going to have to like come back and like really donate to my PayPal at Kaidai's at gmail.com so that I can get a proper video crew so that I can properly illustrate this to you. But really, all you have to do is follow the line. Pick it up, pleat it, get it square, beat it up, catch that fucking pleat, make it work, rinse and repeat. I'm going with a higher pleat height because I have a lot of space to cover 
and a smaller pleat from top to bottom is a pain in the fucking ass. And I've learned that over the last few years of doing these. But it's great. Like, I, I saw, like, one of these, like, half silhouetted where they just, like, did, like, just the black part of just one side of a guitar. And I was like, shit, if you could do one side of the guitar, you could do both sides of the guitar. And I was just like, oh, thank you, Pinterest. So I don't even know who did that and showed me that. And I wish I could go back and, like, find that shit and, like, credit that artist. But, yeah, that person really kind of spun me off into this where I got really into detail. And, um... Uh, yeah, I can almost, I can take a picture of your guitar and uh, put it on a shirt. It's You're not going to get it fast. It's going to take me fucking forever. Like, this is just kind of like my baseline guitar right here that, you know, like I could do if you just want it for like a hundred bucks. But, like, if you want a fucking custom-ass guitar, if you want to send me a picture of your guitar, like, we could talk. But uh, customs are starting at 150 now, guys. Now, some of that shit doesn't line up. You can come back with the tweezers and really work with it by giving it medium pressure. Why would your guitar look like a goddamn tambourine? Does your guitar look like a tambourine? Can you draw a line? Here we go. Now this one's going to look weird after we're done tying it up. It either looks like a squirrel or something else weird. Keep a straight line. Just like every other thing. Try to keep your box square, pulled in, tied, pressed down. Come back around, secure, spread. Like, if you let your finger hook down here, it's going to drop all the way down every time. You don't always have to press down on the thread. Judge Judy. Okay, I think Judge Judy is just a prop at this point. I think maybe at one point, like in her first season, in her first three cases, she may have had a passion for what she was doing. But once she had a taste of money and repetitive and job security, it is the same old shit. Same old shit. You could turn on Judge Judy from fucking 10 years ago and it's the same shit. So I start from the other line because I like to tie on the out. I like to keep my, what I call my shred. My shred, my excess shirt. I like to keep that on the right side of mine because I'm right-handed and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, pleat it up. I don't care what the pleats are on this other side. It's going to look really fucking cool whenever you put like a different color on the neck of the guitar and it mismatches with whatever's going into the, the body of it. What's the Judge Judy case going on right now, Mitch? You better describe that. Can't be up on a Thursday night and not know what the fuck is up with Judge Judy. Tweezers, we're going to catch this corner, get a good other angle, and slam that right in there. Look at that. Perfect. Use your fingers like you would if you were a glass blower to roll that fucking glass and just get that shit around. Follow that line like it was one big blue lid of flame. All right. Douglas B. Johnson, I don't use fishing line. I only use sinew. I don't like fishing line because it bounces back. If I'm going to use something, if I want to use a line, it's going to be kite string or, or, fush, or fucking sinew, honestly. Or personally, I just prefer rubber bands over fishing line. And you're not going to see me doing a kinney just because everybody else does a kinney. So I'm not going to do that, you know. 
like all respect to Paul, like he he's a fucking amazing artist, but I just there's other jams I can catch, man. Like he's got his jam, I'm just gonna do my shit. You know, I'm all about, you know, just me doing my thing and I love his shit. Like I'd love to have one of his shirts. If Paul ever wants to trade a shirt, man, let's get down. Like, tell me what's up. There's a little uh, half fold right here for you. If you can see, you probably can't see, which sucks. Because my camera is not enough. What is my favorite pattern or fold? Um... <laughs> I really like doing the cat butts, honestly. Um, I like the attention that those get. Like, I was really shocked when people were like, yo, this shit's awesome. I love it. I'm like, what the? F really? That's amazing. But, like, you know, my girlfriend makes, like, paints them. So, I mean, people love those. So, I, I shouldn't have been shocked. But I was just like, wow, like, every, like I didn't know that there was a Facebook group with, like, 60,000 people in it that are dedicated to seeing cat buttholes and memes about cat buttholes. It opened up a whole new fucking world to me. It was, it was ridiculous, but awesome. You know, and it, and it, and it really showed me that um, uh, there's a whole world of niches out there, and it, you, you're just going to scratch a niche. And you're going to find people that really love something, you know. And that's what I really love about design work over pattern work is that you can really get things that people identify with over other things. So if you look at this, it looks kind of maybe like a uterus, I guess. I don't know. Um, uh, there's a dividing line where your neck comes in. And you can kind of pull that aside. You can see where that line is where I set it right there. And that can be your dividing line. So when you're putting down color, you know where to put down color. So let's go ahead and one inch towel, dude. Yeah, that's, that's, you, you wanna pay me fucking $50? Let's, I'll send you a little one of these. Like, you, you can make anything a fucking dowel rod. That shit brings me up to another point. I need to take a dab. What is my favorite? Oh, oh, you're looking. Oh, okay. First time. Welcome. Welcome to the fucking circus. Um, I'm Kai Eyes and I'm fucking weird. And uh, I'm just going to take a smoke of weed. That's all. Like I said, I'm Kai Eyes and I'm fucking weird. I like to do tie dye for a living. And uh, I was fucking shocked and amazed that. You could make a living off of tie-dye. Like, I'd always heard jokes about Uncle Jerry and the tie-dyes out of the back of their, their car. And people were very condescending towards anybody really chasing their dreams artistically where I came up. And it was just like, yo, art is just a hobby. You know, you got to have a real fucking job and shit. You know, so I spent my whole life trying to get a real fucking job and shit. But it, it just, shit just didn't work out. So I, I fell into art, and then all of a sudden I knew the art was my fucking job, and now I make a living doing fucking art. And I'm doing what I, when as a kid, my mom used to take me to art festivals, and I looked up to all these people like, you guys are fucking living the fucking dream. You mean you don't go to a goddamn job? You just sit here in a fucking tent trying to sell your work? So all I gotta do is talk to people and convince them to like my work? Oh shit, that sounds like a dream job. And, you know, over time, I've gotten a chance to do this. And it's it's been a fucking blessing. This shit has changed my life. Like, going from doing what everybody expected me to do. Like, I came out of the military with this job that I, I trained for a whole fucking year doing. You know? And it, and it was really detailed and really precise. And, you know, some of my old sergeants and people I served with were like, What the fuck, dude? You just completely wasted your talent. Why are you trying to be a glassblower? You fucking pothead and I was like yeah whatever but you know it 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 panned out to be where it is now and when people ask me where you are I say I'm exactly where the fuck I need to be this shit it hits me to the core you know 
I'm fucking blessed and astonished that this is my fucking life. And thank you for uh, liking my shit, I guess. All right. As I'm putting the rubber bands down, I'm pressing down with a little bit of pressure right here, and I'm putting down with my thumb. So I'm pressing down and pushing in, trying to keep square surface area so it's not going to flip-flop all over the place and taco fold all over and fuck up your jam. Where's everybody tuning in from tonight? You know, this is, what, number three shirt? <laughs> I'm going to add these to the stack of about 30, I don't know, 30, 40 fucking shirts that I got out there in my racks that are dried up and I'm ready to do some dye. So maybe this next week I'm going to be trying to take some clips while I'm on the dye rack. I, don't, I can't see me going live on the dye rack because I just can't stay at the dye rack too long. Shit just gets me. Pop those bands. Pinkies up. New Orleans, what's up? I'm in Baton Rouge, yo. Oh, Southern Oregon, New Zealand. God damn, that's what's good. You're in Kentucky making your way down to Louisiana. I got you, Stephen. What's good? Surfing hippie town, Angela Stocky. You see, all I'm doing right now is I'm just really just trying to push this shit up. Do hey, Mitch, we dodged five fucking hurricanes here in Louisiana where I'm sitting at right now. Other people to my left and my right were not so lucky, but we were. So I'm ready for hurricane season. I, I'm okay. I'm ready. No, I, 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 I don't know what whimper fucking lines. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hit me up in the in the messenger and uh, come get a shirt. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. Stay right. All right. So, like, if you wanted to be a little more specific with the colors before you tied it, you could really take a different, you could take a whole pack of Sharpie mark, uh, not Sharpies, fucking uh, the, the washable Crayola markers, and detail out the colors that you want to dye it where you want it to dye. Because sometimes... You want to pull this spot back. Like personally, I know this is the neck. This right here is going to be the pickups. And if I were able to do a fretboard, I would just drop soap water in one spot and then dye around the other spot. But I would define that with other lines so that I knew where I wanted it to go. So pre-planning is very essential when you're doing this specific design. If you're going to do a guitar this way and you want to make sure that you know where your colors are going, do it like that. This one, I'm just going to, I'm probably going to do like a two or three color tone. Some on the front, some on the back, and then pop it up, throw it up in the shore, in the store, see what's good. See if anybody wants it, wants to help me support my madness and my delusions of becoming a millionaire by tie-dye. I swear to God. I have this thought in my brain because this guy put it out there and he said, there's nobody that will become a millionaire by tie-dye. And I said, fuck, hold my beer. So now I'm trying to build a brand. I'm trying to build a business. I'm trying to teach you guys how to do some really cool fucking tie-dye. If you want to come out and work for me, work with me, not for me. I don't fucking like that. Come work with me. Help me pull down some fucking big wholesale orders. Man, I'll teach you how to do everything I can fucking do. Barefoot. You can ask Fletch. I'm very open about anything that I do. Come work with me. I'll show you everything. It's not all things are achievable through tie-dye. It's money follows passion. And if you really fucking love something, you do what the fuck you can to make it the most fucking cool fucking thing that you do. If that's what you want to do, you know, you, you could just sit there and play video games all day. I don't fucking care. I don't, you know, whatever. But if you're a driven individual and you want to do something, you do it. And right now that's where I'm at. That's where my passion is, is trying to fucking keep up 
with what's going on out here and trying to keep up with all the demand and I really appreciate all you guys like there are some orders out here that I know some of y'all watching and they're coming up I promise and a lot of cool shit but all, all everything that I do live is all it's all donated shirts it's not anything for an order um, I did tie up about three guitar shirts today though so anybody holding on for guitars don't stop believing it's coming I'm telling you but here we go let's get this on try to keep flat surface area on here Get really cool messages here and there. One of my best friends just messaged me and asked me for work. I love this. I love this job. Thanks, Delene. I'll see you out of champs if you're watching, and that's why you hit me up. All right. Cool. Pretty much. Secure it down how you like. You can come in from all angles, but just know where you drew that line right here is your neck, and it's going to be a different color. If you want, you can do it all the same color if you want. It's whatever. I don't care. But the way that I do it is I'm going to do a color right here, and then the bottom of this shit's going to be another color, and then each one of these knobs and everything is going to be a whole ass other color. Because I got to be difficult. Talon, I'm in Baton Rouge, brother. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know you, but uh, hit me up. Let's see what's good. But yeah, that's the guitar. Alright, well, I got one more shirt left in this bag. <sighs> this bag that was brought to you by ShirtSpace.com. Please, I swear to God, if you guys go and buy new shirts from ShirtSpace.com, drop them a line and say, yo, Kai Dyes told me to come check this shit out. And uh, they'll look at me a little bit different. You know, they'll, they'll love me. <laughs> I've been trying to get them a coupon code so that I can throw you guys a discount. But if enough of you guys hit them up and say, yo, Kai Dyes sent me. Can I get a discount? He's a thrifty motherfucker. Send me a discount. Okay, Mitch, it's funny that you mentioned Cat's Cradle because a lot of people here love a cat butt. How many people are watching right now? We got, what, 24 people? Cool. Let's share this shit. I'm going to do the cat butt. All right, you guys want to see the cat butt? But you're going to have to endure watching me do more dabs while you share this. And uh, whoever cuts this up to be a video turns this into... Um, uh, Shit, do I have a cat butt laying around here? I don't have a cat butt to post up. Okay. So I don't have an actual cat butt here. You guys have to endure me doing another dab while you guys share this shit. All right, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is this shit uh, shareable? I'd love for you guys to learn how to do more of these cat butts so that we can all work together. Maybe... Build a cool fucking collective, maybe a cool brand. We can have a cool tag, throw on a shirt. You know, something we can be nationwide in all the smoke shops. What? That's what we want, right? Want to be known. Let's get known, guys. Come on. Put your own spin on what I'm teaching you. If I'm, if I'm teaching you anything. If I'm arrogant enough to think that I'm teaching you anything, whatever. Fuck it. This is how I do my shit. I cold start my dabs. That's how I roll.
All right, so I'll show you a little bit more about this cat butt. We'll go ahead and curve that tail tonight. Show you how to do it. Somebody share this in a fucking tie-dye group. Let's see a bunch of people get on here and look at this shit. It'd be cool. Maybe I got a buddy <clears throat> might chop this down and turn it into a few different videos. So it might play well for all of us. Kitty, kitty, butt, butt. I don't need a fucking iguana. Those things shit fucking everywhere. No. I've got kids. I don't need pets right now, dude. I love fucking dogs. Like, I can't wait till I have another dog. Like, I miss a good dog. But I, I just can't have I got kids. Can't have a pet right now. Unless the kids want some cool little, like, lizard pets or something. that They can stay in a cage. <coughs> Now what I'm going to start doing is I'm just going to sit here wear headphones and you guys can just watch me do tie-dye, I guess. I don't know. Or maybe I'm going to have to like learn how to be a fucking DJ. I'm going to have to like learn how to DJ by foot so that I can play my own music and still work all right. Cool. So we go inside out again before you guys all lose interest again because I'm just a pothead. Man, I love dogs. Like, I just don't have anywhere for them. Like, my spot's a fucking rental. Like, I had a pup with one of my last girlfriends, but she took off with the pup and that shit broke my heart. So I don't want to have another dog around my kids until I can have my own space and it's my own fucking house. So... Project Kai getting the next house is underway, and we're working on it. We're going to find a spot maybe out in Texas, preferably out in Texas. Mm -hmm. There we go. Good little starting place. Yeah, I can get this and like, like put my whole body against this and spread this out, and I can get all my wrinkles out. Just by like holding it and getting good three points on it and getting all my seams up here. Don't give a fuck about the sleeves or whatever, but that's a good start. All right. If you're just tun turn tuning in for the first time, you can check out some of my work on Instagram at Kaidai's. K-Y-E-D-Y-E-S. My name's Kai, and I die. It's just the shit that I do. I should just call it fucking Kai Ties. Because I, I haven't been dying enough lately. I've just been tying enough. What the fuck would I do with an iguana? I'd fuck up and cook an iguana, dude. Like, that would not be cool. Um, You're going to have to fucking keep following me to see me diet because I have to mix a plethora of dyes. Um, um, then we're going to just do the little curvy little tip. Go boop. So that's how I start the curve, and we get a little little curve in there. And we'll find a good line for that.
Then don't forget the heart butt. Miss, you fit, you, 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 you fit a fucking medium, you hit me up, dude. Send me a hundred bucks, I'll, I'll send you that guitar shirt. You can uh, hit me up and we'll talk colors. Alright, cool. Now. <clears throat> this is going to sound kind of retarded, but we're, we're get it. I'm sorry, I've been drinking. That's some fucked up shit to say. I don't like to say that kind of shit. I'd rather curse a hundred fucking times and say some shit like that. I'm really sorry. Goddamn. Whatever. Okay. Give it. Dude, do you have an iguana or something, dude? Like, you, we can make him, like, a cool bandana. All right. So, my trick to curving the tail starts now. I use these little binder clips. Fucking love them. All right, just follow this line, and I'm going to get to this bad boy when I get to it. But I just clip this line down. Just follow the fucking line. It's what we do. Rinse, repeat. But you can start folding this, this shirt under there if you want. Get it out of the fucking way, because it's a bitch. Get it out of the fucking way. Yeah, dude, these binder clips come in handy with these curves. Because you can do what you want. Yep, there we go. But you gotta keep tucking this shirt underneath there. Sorry for the cursing. I was in the army at one point. That's how we communicate. It's really grunts and cursing. It's how you it's how you do it. Cool. There's still people watching. I'm shocked. This is fun. Right on. Okay, cool. So all I'm really doing is I'm curving this and I'm tucking this line underneath and, it, and it's going to come out asymmetrically. And that's a fucking really weird concept in tie-dye because everybody knows in tie-dye everything's so fucking symmetrical. So when you throw just a little touch of asymmetry into it, you can really fuck with people's brains. And it's kind of fun. So there you go. That's the trick, and we got all the way through with just this many clips. Boop, 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 boop. Cool. So, effective communication. All right, cool. So, I'm going to get my heart because we like to do the cat butt. Because the cat butt loves to show you love. That's all this cat butt is saying. It's saying, hey, I love you. So, it's boop, boop. So, you draw half a fucking heart. And you go. Now, I'm going to start off with that half fold again on these corners. It really creates the sharpest point once you pull that fucking sinew down. <clears throat> Here we go. Here we go. Attach your lines. Get your heart about a good eighth inch to sixteen inch height. And I don't know, let's measure that. How do we do millimeters? Let's do millimeters. It's about six millimeter height. It really just shows a sharper edge, and it creates more of a rounded edge the shorter pleats that you get. It's a little tougher to control, but you get a better feel for it the more you go for it. 
So it's really just a finger control thing and a muscle control thing. And once you get it, and you remember to do half folds at the end every time, you can have a good line. Now you follow that line, you got your half fold on each end, and you get your sinew. Now again, this size is a size medium. It's a Comfort Colors, and I got it from shirtspace.com. Now, they give you uh, free shipping after you've uh, racked up $59 worth of blank cotton to tie-dye. So give them a shot, dude, and uh, tell them I sent you. Send them a message in the notes. Say, yo, tie-dye said what's good. Maybe they'll send me some more shirts. Maybe some other uh, dye dyeable items to do on live uh, Facebook and stuff. All right, cool. So we got a cool heart. If you've seen me do a heart, we've done a heart. Cool. That's just one part. The heart. Where the cat farts. <laughs> that was stupid. All right, cool. So we're going to try to keep this uh, fold, and we're going to try to keep it from creasing. So we've got just the uh, one side of the shirt folded under and curved. So we're going to get it, and I want to make sure that it's going to be on my right side when I'm done. So we're going to start from the bottom. Because, uh, what's that stupid wrap? We started from the bottom, now we're here. I mean, so I guess uh, we started from the cap, but now we're here. How we do this online? We good. Now, the foot, you can do it however you want. I like to add, like, the foot, like, they're... Uh, needing some braces see so yeah, let's get a higher pleat i'm gonna go for maybe like a quarter inch to half inch in between there instead of a small pleat on the outside fold because we've got a lot of line to call it cover so let's go ahead and keep going on that line this guy up right there get that corner catch that corner this and all the while the clips stay in place really and you can really use these little binder clips anywhere in these processes I probably haven't exploited these binder clips enough As we get into these corners, I like to tuck this uh, the fabric that don't belong there out of the way. <clears throat> As you go through a long line, you really have to make sure that you're maintaining the same height of pleats. Because if you don't, you'll create what I call a sneak point. And you don't want some dice sneaking past that point that your sinew just can't tie down on. So the... Uh, crisper and more uniform your pleats are the less dye leakage that you're going to get as you go through these projects binderclip.com nothing kydyes.com i'm going to have some more shirts listed on there here shortly um uh i just really gotta get them back and listed and that's not my forte Really, I'm just giving excuses for why I'm lazy. So, I'm sorry for being lazy, guys. I really am. But I'm making up for it tonight by giving you guys all my secrets and showing you guys how to do all my cool shit that feeds all my children. So, if you love me and you're still watching at kydyes at gmail.com on PayPal, if you'd like to send a digital tip, I certainly would appreciate it. Get a chance to go check out kydice.com as well because uh, I still got some like coffee cups and uh, cool stuff going on up there. Even if I don't have tie-dye up, I've got some fun stuff up there if you'd like to help support me and my mission to help y'all learn better tie-dye and uh, sharpen some uh, edges. Like, y'all make some fucking rad tie-dyes already as it is. Like, But if I can help, 
sharpen your edges and we can do something cool, <clears throat> let me know. Like, I'm not going to do any like crazy obscure customs and shit. I don't know. I might do some crazy obscure customs and shit on some of these live videos. I don't know yet. Might be kind of fun to get some on the spot to somebody like, yo, hey, I'll send this to your PayPal if you do this. And I might be like, yeah, I might do a live uh, custom and get your uh, project started if you go ahead and pay me live. That'd be fucking cool. But uh, what I really want to do is uh, come to a city near you and teach a class. So if you know a smoke shop and you're really close with them and you like want me to like, come on out and hang out, convince them that I'm uh, some kind of heady bro or something. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Tell them what you got to do. Just say, hey, man, Kydice needs to come out here and he, he, he can get a, you know, $500 a class. You know? Come pay $500. I'll feed you. I will fucking cook you food as I teach you tie-dye for two days. I'll cook you at least one meal out of the two days. I promise. That'll be some fun shit. Ah. Okie doke. Cool. So, there we go. We got that curve. And all, all we had to do was fold it up underneath at first and keep the clips. And as I folded, I removed the clips. So now these guys all out of the way. You put them back where they go. Little clip bucket. I found the weight on Amazon.com. I got Amazon Prime and I just go nuts because I got a cool little credit card. Just pay it off as I go. But um, that's a 4 by 4 by 0.5 um, um, bench block. If you want to check that out, I've got a video on one of my YouTube on my YouTube channel on one of those videos that I've got a lot of affiliate links on. I need to work on getting more of those down. But, boy. I'm just blabbing and spilling beans. Shit. <laughs> so, check that out. I just put fucking duct tape all over it. <laughs> it's still heavy as shit. <laughs> it's great. I just put duct tape all over it because it started corroding. What the fuck are you gonna do? Duct tape for the win. Again. All right, cool. That's your cat butt. Again, get a good stiff fucking line on the outside, and then I'm going to dye it gray, and then do some like thicker black on top so that it looks like stripes. And then we'll make the uh, little cat heart booty hole pinkish red. And that's how we rock. So we're going to go ahead and get in on these sleeves. Stuff them inside out again. <sighs> Catch the collar by the center. Fold it in half. Pull those out. That's your... That'll get you inside out almost perfectly. Now, with this capo, we can get all fancy, but this is a medium. We'll do some th thick little spine lines at a different angle. We're going to make them kind of thick. No real rhyme or reason. <clears throat> but we're just going to do it. Why? Because. Fucking tie dye is awesome. You can do all kinds of different patterns on top of all these different shirts. You can do designs. You can do all kinds of different shit. That's what I love about this stuff. The sky's the limit. If 
Right there, a little triple band to keep that shit a little bit tighter. We got the sleeves. We're just gonna stuff these guys inside out. Let them be some kind of like deep fucking whatever dye. Let this shit get all over the place. Get, pull those out and just pull that fabric out and push that fabric back the fuck in. Just right there. Just replace that shit right there. And you've got nice little deep pleats. Nathan Riggle's a fucking master, dude. Like, dude. I, I actually have uh, one of uh, Nathan's tapestries. You guys want to see one of uh, Nathan's tapestries? I've got the Joe Rogan. I've got the Joe Rogan tapestry. I'd be hurt if I found out that there were two of them, because all I know is that there are one of them right now, and it is one of the most amazing pieces of artwork I have ever held. If you guys don't buy these off of me personally, I swear to God, I'm just going to take them to Vegas with me. They will sell. All the shirts that I've done tonight are the size medium, and they are all comfort colors. Now, it's not going to be immediate that I dye them, but I'm going to dye them. And if you message me and you hit me up, I'm going to annotate that on my spreadsheet. When I did it, who I did it, when I did it, all that shit. I've been trying to make me a custom. Yes, that's a tapestry. What? What's the tapestry? Which tapestry? Yeah, oh, the tap that tapestry is crazy. Yeah, fucking Joe Rogan. Here, I'll pull it out. I've been enjoying it with different lights and shit. Like, I'll take a little bit of mushies and just chill here and watch the lights bounce off of his fucking teeth and just be like, God damn, I wonder who his fucking dentist is. But, who's sitting up? But, um, geez, I'm, I'm really shocked anybody has really stayed on it with me like i really thank you guys um uh for sticking with me i promise one of these days we're gonna show you how to die shit so that we can like stop calling this uh kai ties and uh get with the the kai dies now what i'll probably end up doing is uh i might do this shit on tiktok laying down dies or something i don't know but there's so much out there so many ways to show it but you'll see it on my Facebook page probably first because that's what my old ass is most adapted to um uh, Lysander do you die die or do you just like art you're doing NFTs because uh, NFT fucking art is fucking cool you die the octopus shirt then go back and look man do Twitch. So if I just sit here and like hang out, like that's cool. That's like Twitch. That's that's where the money's at. Is that how we hang out? Lysander, sell some NFTs, bro. I mean, maybe I just like feel like I'm like Facebook famous and like people on Facebook know me and shit. But I'd love to see other platforms. I'm gonna go check out Twitch. See what's good. But Will I not be able to stream live on uh, YouTube if I do that shit? Because that's what I, I would suck here. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I need to beef this guy up. Go fibble, fobble, wibble, wobble, slap a band. Boop, boop. Well, shit. Maybe you need to... Okay, so, like, when I got into art, my whole fucking thing was so cool shit. I mean, I can still express myself through shit that's cool. Even if it is a little bit derivative. Like, I mean, tie-dye is fucking derivative of shit. A lot of people have been doing tie-dye for a long time. But I get to make my shit unique, so it's kind of cool. 
I mean, Lysander, you fucking social media me right, right now. Like, don't tell me on social media. Here you go. Here I go on social media, not social media. And again, okay, here's a random ass shirt. You know, you want to make a little bit of money right here? What the? I don't, I don't know what the shit this is. Can anybody tell me what this tag is? Uh, Zanana Premium. What the fuck is this? Uh, it's a long sleeve shirt. And with long sleeve shirts, you want to go inside the sleeve first immediately. Grab that other one. Okay, so this shirt style is a Henley. Okay, what the fuck does that mean, David Clark? Educate me. Thank you. Because I just got the sleeves inside each other. Oh, shit. I nailed that. Doing tight, I'm making it look easy. Okay, so we're going to a trippy fucking... Uh, Damn, that shit folded out really well. We're going to do something with this. I get some more rubber bands and a dab. Don't even know how long I've been live. Shit, two hours or something? All right, cool. So, since we got sleeves inside of sleeves and stuff, we're going to go ahead and get a yardstick. Get a yardstick, stick it inside of the sleeves on top. Pinch the bottom. Guys, you know what? This is like... This is like two hours that I haven't smoked a cigarette. So, in some circles, I should be really proud of myself here. Gummy gummies. Oh, I smoke weed, Lysander. If you're a butt tender, I just smoke weed, brother. What do I dab? Um, I don't know. This shit's called like Godfather OG Kush. Honestly, yeah, I just threw another shirt together. <coughs> so we're gonna dab the grime real quick. Look at this fucking cool thing. It's pink in this light, but if I were to turn on this light and turn off this light, look at that shit. Now it's white. Watch this. Check this shit out. Boop. Now it's pink. Oh. Boop. Pink. White. What? Everybody should start token again, man. And everybody should start collecting my friend's bongs. So I don't know how many of you guys know Pogo. But I showed this at the beginning. But this is a whole ass other bong that I bought on the blockchain. Let me see here. That light. Got this thing on the blockchain. It's got a QR code on it, dude. This thing's nuts. It's got a, a meme laser engraved on it, which you can find by clicking on the QR code. You can find the meme and the weed overlay on it. And one of my homies, this homie, if these look familiar, look at that. They're a pair. Oh, the two poison skulls by the homie po, uh, Pedro Grime. Okay, and my homie Pogo. My Pogo put his bongs on the blockchain, dude. So if you know anything about crypto, this is a big deal. 
I got this one for one Ethereum. If anybody wants to scoop it off of me, man, I'm going 10x on it. I want 10 Ethereum for this motherfucker. That's it. Oh, yeah, well, let's fucking cold start something. Oh, so I don't know what the fuck else we got over here. Pot of gold, pot of, pot of trash. We got some deadhead OG Kush. If that means anything. But yeah, hey, this one, we're just going to throw down like a little fucking uh, really quick uh, psychedelic pattern by just scrunching this down and throwing rubber bands on it. Because you don't have to be all serious and throw design on everything. But yeah, man, my homie Grime did this. He was like, yo, you want a piece? And I was like, fuck yeah, I want a piece. Then I paid him a lot of money. And I waited a really long time like a fucking person should. When they're waiting on their favorite fucking artist's work. You know, we got lives and shit. We have to understand that. It's great. Yeah, this deadhead OG Kush. It's, it's uh, pretty fire. Dude, they hooked me up out there at Third Coast Eddie's while I was out there in Colorado Springs. <coughs> dude, thanks for joining me, David Clark, dude. Have a good night. Thanks for everybody who stuck by. <coughs> We're going to close this up really quick. <coughs> Something you can do to make <coughs> really good. <coughs> really good money. <coughs> is hit your local thrift store. <coughs> They've got <coughs> all the cotton you need. <coughs> really? <coughs> <coughs> There's a thirty or forty dollar shirt right here. <coughs> you can deepen it, get it a little more scrunch and detail. <coughs> Maybe by the time I'm coughing, I'll be done with this shirt. <coughs> you know what? <coughs> I just caught the tag on this shit. <coughs> oh, shit. Alright, something I didn't catch before I soaked this shit. <coughs> That's, uh... Fucking 60% polyester blend. That's just trash. Don't fucking dye that shit. But anyways, <coughs> I think I'm going to call that a night. Uh, I hope I have left you with a whole bunch of cool shit that you can go on and use. Yo, yeah, the Dogecoin tapestry in the background, please. Yo, check that shit out. Yeah, you see my little fake-ass studio over here trying to look like a G and shit. <coughs> but here, check this out. 
How do I? Oh, here we go. Switch that shit. Oh, look at that. There's the Doge. Let's see if the Rogan's right here. <coughs> I have to go in the other room for the Rogan. I'm not going to the Rogan. Not going to the Rogan right now. Got to go in the other room for it. Oh, my goodness. So, I'm going to call that a night. I really appreciate you guys, everybody checking in. Uh, it's going to be really hard to upload a fucking three-hour video to YouTube. So, you're going to have to give me a few days. I want to talk to a couple few people and see what we can do. <clears throat> if we do that, you're not going to see this dumbass chatter ever again. So, you'll have a wonderful evening. I appreciate you. And if you guys want to, like, send some love, um, uh, my PayPal's is uh, kydies at uh, gmail.com. And I really appreciate everybody that supports me. Seriously. Thank you. Have a good night.